So, Belinda, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you here. So, um, this series that we call Coil Perspectives is an opportunity to interview guests, mm -hmm. experts, on a single question for a period of time. And the one we've been working on for about a year now is around the issue of retention. Mm -hmm. So, I'm wondering if you could start off by describing to us what retention, what that word means to you, how you, how you frame it in your mindset. Well, I probably have to start from that point of it being contextual. And so I work at the Open University, and so when we use the word retention, we're, we're talking about probably the persistence of our students to stay within their programs and courses and to complete, to be successful. And so a lot of our effort and energy goes into retaining our students within those courses and programs, and we put a lot of support around that um, to enable, enable our students to, to get from, say, you know, one course into the next course or into the next year in particular. So I'm going to suspect that there's an economic driver behind <laughs> the way we do this Absolutely. for all of us, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's expensive to bring them in. So, yeah. so my sense is that you're doing it from the beginning phone call or that beginning mm -hmm. contact with a student all the way through to their completion. And you have support services wrapped up. Oh, absolutely. But it's not just that. about the economic driver for us as an organisation, because it is that as well. Um, but it's also for students, because they're now paying fees. Mm -hmm. And so in the UK oh, context, not dissimilar to here, mm -hmm. you know, fees are a big part of a student's loan and debt. And so you don't want a student, you know, accruing a debt when they haven't been successful. You want them to be successful. So there's two sides to that. You know, not only the institutional driver, of course, it makes sense for us to have our students complete. Um, but also for the students, for them to be successful as well. They want to know that we're doing the absolute best we can mm. um, to keep them in the system as well and to be successful. Do you, I'm just curious here, do you find out from the student when they enter your programs of what their goals are? We've had conversations here many times about, well, what's a successful student? Perhaps mm -hmm. they only wanted that one course. or Maybe they only wanted the one module in the one yeah, course. Yeah. And so, have you wrestled with that? We do, because the government um, puts on us um, particular requirements, and, and they have a definition of what success looks like. And so at the moment, a lot of the, in the UK, a lot of the measurements done around the completion of our qualification. So that could be a degree. Um, primarily, it is the degree. And so similar to what you were just saying there, we have students who um, you know, only come in for one course or may only come in for a certificate, but actually they don't get counted in the system. And so oh, that they may well be seen as failures, even though they've actually been quite successful sure. because they haven't completed a degree. Yeah. So we do struggle with some of the policy environment sometimes right. and how the government defines what success looks like. Right. So on the public boards, you know, all the universities list all their retention and completion and sure. graduation rates. And sometimes our graduation completion rates can, can not look as good. Mm -hmm. But then again, our students come with a different aspiration. They're not necessarily all doing a degree. And I loved it during your talk this morning, you, you mentioned several times about knowing that learner, understanding yes. the, di the uh, dynamics of their oh, life yeah, yeah. And, and in order, because that gives you the context by which you do almost oh, yeah. everything else. Yeah. I always say that, you know, a student who comes to us, um, you know, is already highly motivated. Mm -hmm. And so they've, they've already sort of just made that decision, oh, yes, I'm going to come and learn. They're probably giving away about seven years of their life to study. Mm -hmm. That's a huge decision sure. to make. So in a sense, they already come to us highly motivated, um, but because we're, we're that open access university as well, they come to us sometimes with less than an A-level. Um, they're working, potentially full-time or part-time. They're carers. They could have a disability. And so they're signing up for a program with all sorts of things going on in their lives, and we're an open university. We see that, well, that's our, that's our segment. That's our market. Sure, that's what sure. we do. And so our job is to make sure that we keep those students motivated support them as much as we can to reach their destination. Okay, so that's a perfect, <laughs> perfect cue up for the second question, which is if you had all the resources at hand that you can mm -hmm. bring to the table, what, what would a system look like in your mind that would help a student reach those goals, yeah. be, su oh. be successful, retain, and be persistent? I'd like them to have a life coach. Mm. 
I think love putting a life coach beside them, who's I guess becomes a study coach as well, sure. but but does all sorts of other things, you know, that helps support them in their the way that they're changing as an individual as they go on this learning journey with us, how they manage their their lives and look after their kids and and just sort of keep all of that together and at the same time keep them on that study journey and help them make the right choices in terms of what kind of courses they need to do. Keep them studying, you know, sure. check up on them, sure. you know, and just sort of say, well, you know, how many hours have you put in this week? Have you done that exercise yet? And, and to kind of be a little bit on their case in terms of that, you know, they, the way coaches can be. Sure. Um, so can I take from this that you'll be hiring 200,000 <laughs> life, <laughs> life coaches? Wouldn't that be wonderful? But we could. I know. I, I mean, there's a, there could be a way to do that. Now, sure. what about the alumni? I don't reckon we've tapped the alumni fully yet. I think you're right. You know, there um, could be potential there. Well, as you were talking through that, I was thinking back to your talk and the amount of data that we have that, mm -hmm. could, that could feed that, automate it to a degree. Yes. Uh, you can have one life coach who has maybe 200. Yeah, yeah. You know, because they're, they're touching in a different data point. So there's a way to get to that. Well, could there be a Siri? You know, wouldn't yes, it be amazing yeah, yeah, for there yeah, to be yeah, a yeah. Siri of some kind? I don't know what that would be, but some kind of sure. intelligence that, you know, maybe the holograms will get really good and out will pop Siri and just sort of say, Belinda, have the you done days. your study today? Yeah, <laughs> you right. haven't been on the VLE, you know, what yeah. are you doing? And so there could be something that could be quite exciting with the technology that could help with that too. You know, you just triggered a thought for me. We, we often talk about personalization mm. as, a, uh, as a student, you know, personalizing the learning environment. Mm. But I think the other meaning for me, personalization has always had, is exactly that life coach idea. Yeah. Someone who knows you, cares about yeah, you, yeah. is that concierge, is, is yep. thinking forward yeah, for yeah, you yeah. just enough, not to do the work for you, but no. just bringing you along. You know, like they know that you're going on holidays soon. Sure. And so they help you plan your study routine so you can have a holiday, that kind of thing. I could do with one of those life coaches. I like that, <laughs> <laughs> I like that idea. I like that idea. So, so the last question is then, okay, we, we can't have 200,000 no, individual no, no, life no. coaches. Although I like the alumni idea you're getting there. Yeah, yeah. Um, what can we do? What should we be doing as a first step toward that kind of an environment where we create that personal connection for our learners in order to do a better job of ensuring their success? Mm. For me, it probably starts right at that front line. You know, that first moment a student contacts the organisation and what we find out about them and what advice we give them, um, how we set them up to be successful. Um, because the kind of university we are, because we're an open university, you know, we can talk about we're giving them an opportunity, but it's not an opportunity if they're failing. That's not an opportunity. That's not an access opportunity. So I think if right up very front we're having those good, you know, good conversations about, well, how busy are you? How many kids have you got? And when are you going to fit study in? Have you thought about that? Are you able to adjust your workload? Are you going to work full time or part time? So you start to have that very rich, it's almost like a diagnostic, you know, sort of diagnostic conversation Absolutely. up front, which kind of sort of says, well, okay, having heard all that, we think you can manage it. This is the way you could do it. Here's some adjustments and it you may here. need to make. And, yeah. And so, yeah, I, yeah, I think you're absolutely so right. So right up very front. Absolutely. And then if you could continue that journey. That relationship. And that relationship yeah. somehow has to remain as rich as that all the way through. And maybe the technology will be able to help us do some of that. Well, technology will be able to fill in you know. data points for you. Yeah, yeah. But ultimately, it's going to come down to an email or a text or a phone call from a, another human being mm. who, who reaches out and says... Peers as well. Or peers. I mean, that's the other yes. thing for me is the, the online community, the power of social media and what we've observed there. That sense of creating a community and being part of a community. I think there are some lessons we still have not learned in there about how we create communities of learners. Yeah and how those communities play with them. Support and Support each, each other. Because yeah. there has to be some responsibility accepted by the learner as well. Sure. You know, we're, yeah. not, we're not all going to be matriarchal and patriarchal right. about the journey. Right. You know, right. people have decided to be part of a sure. learning journey. And so you treat them as adults, not as children. But it's, um, it's interesting. You said that they come in with a high level of motivation. Mm -hmm. Do they also come in with a high level of self-directedness? Do, do they have the strategies? To, well, you know. I think the research points to the distance and online learner, the successful one, mm -hmm. quite often has those strategies right. in, their, in their kit bag. But some people need to learn them, yeah. need to understand them. So I don't think they fully understand mm -hmm. what's required. And I know from our students, we, they often tell us that, that that first sort of six to eight weeks is a bit of a shock. Yeah. 
they don't quite have not quite understood you know what's what's required so maybe we need to be doing a better job of helping them develop those skill sets yeah yeah understanding what self-directed ownership mm -hmm. means of this yeah, yeah. there's maybe there's a job to be done around learning how to learn yeah you know and getting that up front but we are obsessed about the discipline content yes you know and many of our academics and faculty are interested in they're here to teach this, yes, right. you know, it's maths or it's science, whatever it is, they're, they're teaching that. You know, there are some very good and talented teachers who manage to weave in amongst that, sure. learning how to learn. So they have to shift from I'm here to teach math to I'm here to teach students. Well, maybe, you know, getting that sort of balance, mm -hmm. you know, sort of balancing that up in a new way. I think especially in that online and distance environment, I think you do need to establish up front you know that, well what the expectation is and helping people understand. It's the meta process sure. of being a student. And the exciting part of it and then you see them reach their goals yeah. and success yeah, and yeah. retention. So yeah, absolutely. Terrific. Thank you so much. No, no, it's, it's my pleasure. pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Thank you.